encourage uh, you to come. We don't want them to think that decisions that we end up making are flippant, that we've thought through that and we've heard from everybody that we can hear from. So that's going to be at Blanton's Church tomorrow night at 6.30. And some people have asked me what are they going to share, and I don't know. Uh, but it'll be worth talking to them, and I'm sure they'll have some question and answer time uh, from the perspective of the conference leadership. And so that will be at Blanche Church uh, at 6.30 tomorrow night. And then on Tuesday night, our softball team's uh, playing, first game of the tournament. And uh, I don't know all the de details of how all that's working out, but that's going to be Tuesday night at a uh, different time than what we've had. Uh, it's going to be at 710, uh, and so you can see that and be reminded of that. And then, uh, like I say, uh, I'm doing a Wednesday night study over at Blanton's Church every week, and they're serving a meal. And so if you want to be part of that, uh, let me know so that I can alert the people who are cooking there that there's some others coming. But we've had a good time with that, and uh, the food's really been good. And uh, we're eating at 6, and then uh, meeting around tables, and then doing a Bible study around the tables there. And... Uh, so I, if anybody wants to be part of that, I'd encourage you to. And like I say, a big decision time for our church, a vote of church members happening on August the 20th at 3.30 in the uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, so I know many of you are already thinking and, and praying and believing about that. Um, it's going to be a good time to be together today. If you're able, I want to invite you to stand and let's ask God's blessing and and touch upon us in this service as we open our heart to what God wants to say to us. Oh, Lord Jesus, I do thank you for the opportunity we have to come together. Help us as we praise your name, as we praise with music, and we pray together, and we listen to your word, and we've gathered in this place to fellowship together. And as we receive together your sacrament of Holy Communion, all of these things, Lord, help us to be tuned in to your Holy Spirit and to hear what you want to say to us and believe that God is helping us and blessing us. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Carol, come and lead us in our song. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Pray out, hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Stay behold.
song. To remain standing and let us join our voices together in uh, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's take a minute to greet each other today. Did y'all hear Angie trying to get us back? Uh, she's good about that. Uh, let's sing again. Y'all stay seated. Cheers. 
Amen. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer today. And, of course, you see we do have a prayer list, and we want to remember each one of them. Do you know? <laughs> Sound system hadn't acted like this in a long time, so I don't know. You know, y'all have heard me say that uh, there's just something wrong about uh, sound system. So, uh, uh, everywhere you go. So, uh, what is it that I <laughs> told Chris a while ago? It'll be better in the n uh, new sanctuary, right? Uh, when, well, yeah, and uh, so uh, I might ought to just turn it off, but there are people out there in the internet land who are. look at it. Uh, anyway, y'all have updates or uh, new requests that you want to ask us? Yes, Elena. Let's, let's continue to pray, pray for Kicks. That's a big deal in what he's been through, and we want to lift him up in prayer. Um, others? Yes, Holly. And you're here, uh, bless you. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, I, I was about your age when I had mine out and was laid up for a while. So you're you're getting around, and uh, so bless you, Anna. Um, others? Yes, Mama. There are things going around, and uh, no doubt about it. I read an article this week saying there's an increase, but it's not like it had been. And uh, so we do want to lift each other up in prayer. Let's pray together. Oh, our Lord, we thank you today again for the opportunity to be together for all of your blessings in our lives, most of all for coming into our world and dying on the cross for us so that we might know what it means to trust in you for what you've done for us because, Lord, on our own we have no hope. And so we thank you, Lord, today that, uh, that you died and rose again from the dead so that we today would be able to know that our sins are forgiven and that our lives are transformed and that you have united us together to be able to serve your purposes in the world. And so today, Lord, as we look around our world and see so many things that are not the way they ought to be, we ask you to be involved in each one of those things. Uh, places around the world, Lord, where people are suffering from violence and war and uh, the decisions of world leaders that uh, are not for the betterment of their people today, Lord. And we pray that the decisions of all of our leaders, including our leaders here in the United States, might be in accordance with your kingdom so that we might see peace and prosperity and good things happen into our lives and that we'd be able to see you and that all the people of the world would Lord, see an improvement in their lives and, Lord, help more and more to come to know you. But we do pray for people who serve our nation today, Lord, of every position and party. I particularly pray today, Lord, for those who are serving in the military, in dangerous and difficult situations, in other kinds of dangerous uh, positions, Lord, our law enforcement, our firefighters, uh, people who serve in medical professions with people, and Lord, we recognize that there are increasing numbers of people who are ill these days, and we just ask that you'd bring protection and help and recovery. 
We also see people on our list, Lord, who need a touch from you. And Lord, I just ask that you'd help each one. There are some here in this service today who need healing today. But there are others of us, Lord, who are dealing with other kinds of things going on in our lives. Uh, there are some of us who've known grief and loss this week, and as well as some who are continuing to deal with loss in our lives. And then we also recognize that there are relational issues and financial issues and other things going on in our lives. Help us, Lord, to know that you are able to do what we need. So as we pause for a moment of silence in our prayer time today, we pray that you'd help us to experience and trust your Holy Spirit who is coming and praying for us when we don't even know how to pray for ourselves. Could we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Ushers, will you come and help us with this morning's tithes and offerings? We do thank you for how you've helped us and blessed us both individually as a church. Help us to be the people and the church you've called us to be and that, Lord, we would recognize that you are doing what we need both individually and as a church. Amen. How's Rusty today? Zuri, you coming up here?
Y'all both seem happy as you can be today. How are you? Okay. Well, you know, let me talk to you serious about something that the Bible talk, talks to us about. Here's what the Bible says. We know that all things work together for good for those who are called according to God's purpose. Okay? Do you believe that? So everything works together for good for those who are called according to God's purpose. <laughs> and that is something to be excited about now. And uh, so you can trust that God's going to take care of you yeah. no matter what. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about that in here today. Who y'all? Who, who's going back with y'all today? Oh, uh, Mama's going to go back in the back with y'all today. So let me pray with you, and then we'll let you head off. Let's pray. You can hold a book. It's a hymnal, but it's good. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for Zuri and Rusty and all of the young people of our church and our community. Help us, Lord, to recognize that you're at work, and you're going to help us as we see more and more young people and other age people become part of the things that are happening here. We thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, she's got a song today. Uh, I think it's Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, but, uh, you know, it's good. And, uh, you know, last uh, Sunday our granddaughter came and sang in the service, and it was a neat thing for her to do that. And uh, she's done a lot of singing in front of groups, in including in groups at her church, but... Uh, they hadn't been part of a worship service, and I didn't realize that. So, you know, her mother was real proud, but she had to watch the video because she was singing up at Murfreesboro First Methodist Church last week uh, all weekend, and then immediately I think they went to Dollywood. So uh, they're back home to, to last night, and so I think she might be singing again today uh, up there at uh, First Church. But, uh, you know, y'all know that's a tradition in the lady line of our family uh you know i i sometimes just kind of smile and say well i married a musician and i got musician children and and uh now grandchildren and it's a blessing and of course joanne started that although she claims she can't sing anymore but when i do hear her try it sounds pretty good so uh, you know it's all good stuff I'm looking again today in Romans chapter 8, and I hope you'll be able to follow along there. Uh, I've been taking Romans chapter 8 for some weeks now, and uh, uh, today we're ready to get up to um, verse, that's not Romans, uh, I got two bookmarks in this Bible, it makes it hard to follow. I'm ready to start reading at Romans 8, 26, and I'm going to read down through Verse uh, 30, and I hope you'll follow along with me. Did y'all bring Bibles? There are a few around here, but it's a good idea to have your own Bible at church. Uh, you know, and uh, so, and, uh, you know, I'll be interested when we look at this because this is one of the first passages of uh, Scripture I ever preached on. Um, and, you know, particularly back in those days, I was in school, so I had to break down every word. And uh, so one of the things that I did was I learned what different translations the Bible had in them, and there's a lot more now than there used to be. But uh, we want to talk about that a little bit, and I'm be curious a little bit as to what different versions we've got. Uh, and uh, because one of the things that's been true for about 30 years now, Brother Johnson, is that uh, there's not just one translation anymore. Everybody's got different ones, and uh, you you live through that too. And uh, you know, bless you. Let's let's read. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows 
what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now in this passage, you just almost have to focus in on that verse 28, which says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Now, y'all know that verse? Y'all be able to quote it? Because it gives us confidence that as we begin to face different things in our lives, that God will work those for good. Now, there's more here than most of us hear when we read that. And so we ought to pay attention to the details uh, because most of what what we've done, I don't know, I remember as a child, and my mom and dad were both school teachers, and so uh, we children had to have somebody take care of us during the day, and our person was the next door neighbor, and her name, this all I really knew, was Beth. And Beth, you know, we spent more time with Beth than we did our parents. And Beth was a wonderful lady. She's gone on to heaven now. But one of the things that she, her husband, uh, who I didn't even know his name, (laughs) he worked the midnight shift up at DuPont Manufacturing Plant uh, in Old Hickory. Any of y'all know anything about that? And so, you know, by the time we got there, he was going to bed, and so we had to be quiet, of course. And then he'd wake up about noon, and, and Beth always fixed this big breakfast for him. Uh, you know, I kind of, you remember and look back on those early days in your life, and the truth of the matter is that by the time I was in what is now middle school, uh, the school, which was on the other side of their house from where we grew up, uh, had expanded and took their property. And so they moved away. We stayed in touch with them but and over the years. And one of the things that happened was I reconnected with uh, some of the uh, boys in their family uh, some years in the last few years. And uh, one of those uh, young man who had joined the church that my sister goes to up there in that same community, I got a chance to see over and over again, and he passed away just recently, and so I was reminded again of all the positive things that did. But Beth would fix a big breakfast meal for her husband, Mr. Nixon, that's the way I knew him, um, at lunchtime every day. So there was coffee and eggs and pancakes and sausage and I mean all of that stuff was there but one of the things they did before they ever started eating was they got out this little plastic box full of little cards it said printed on the outside some of y'all have had one of these it said our daily bread on it and they would pull out one of those cards And on it was a Bible verse. And they would read that Bible verse, and then they'd stick it in the back of the box, and the next day they'd take out the new verse. And isn't that a wonderful habit to have every day? Some of y'all have had that. I can see heads nodding as I'm talking about it. But when it comes to trying to And by the way, uh, the Nixons, they didn't go to the kind of church we went to. They went to a different denominational church. Their services, which I don't remember ever going to, but I think we did, uh, they were much louder 
and more demonstrative than the church I went to, which, by the way, was much louder and more demonstrative than y'all are. Uh, that's another time story. But, but when it comes to trying to find out how to interpret the details of what Scripture is trying to tell us, pulling out one verse at a time probably distracts us. Because when we go to interpreting the Bible, we need, more than anything else, to look at it within its context of what's being talked about. So, you know, as I've thought about how to preach from this passage, I'm not sure I can do it justice because there's so much rich truth here just in this verse. Uh, one of the things that I've thought about wanting to say to you this uh, today is that when we look at this verse that says, we know that all things work together for good, that we need to get a hold of a what and a who and a who and a what. Y'all y'all gonna go with me on that uh, journey? What? Let's start with the what. First of all the first what. Okay? What is it? All things. What do y'all think all things include? All things, right? Uh, everything. Uh, but in this context, well look back to previous stuff here it, it's something specific and we're not going to like what I'm about to say but it's still there which is that in the verses leading up to this and we've been looking at the last few weeks he's talking about the struggles and the hard things I don't think it uses this language a lot but in other places throughout the scripture it really does he's talking about those things in our life that cause us personal suffering I actually you know was all ready to talk about this this morning and I got up and read the book that I'm reading devotionally which is a life story of a young lady who uh, became a missionary nurse in pretty primitive conditions in Africa somewhere around 45 years ago. Uh, I remember this lady who I heard speak back in those days. I've been trying because I saw somebody put on Facebook that, uh, and this person who I know lives in Nashville said, you know, I remembered her speaking years ago and I wanted to, see if I could find her, and I did a search, and I found her about an hour from where I live. And I was shocked by that because she grew up in uh, California, according to the story of her life and called the mission mm -hmm. field. And then I, I was able to discover that after she came back to the United States after her time in Africa, she lived in Pennsylvania, but I began to recognize that she lived somewhere in rural Tennessee, but I hadn't figured out what town yet. So she's still around. Uh, but she, you know, as I was reading the passage that I was reading about this morning, she starts talking about this verse, that while she was a nurse at this missionary hospital in the very primitive part of Africa, she said, I had to have a complaint session with God because the day before somebody had borrowed my motorcycle without asking me and had wrecked it. And I knew that I was going to be walking to get around. Now, you know, Marty and I went some years ago on a mission trip over to Africa to help work on some buildings for an orphanage over there. It was a different part of Africa altogether than this woman had been. But one of the things that just 
frightened us was how many of these little bitty underpowered motorcycles were running around the roads. There wasn't many cars. There was these cheap little, un, uh, you know, they probably didn't have much more power to them than what we used to call mopeds. Uh, but uh, people were driving them all up and down every little mud road and place. And if you got behind them going up a hill, you slowed down. So, you know, Jane was riding on this. And so she had had this little motorcycle and had been put out of commission while she was serving Jesus at the hospital. And she said, I had to say, God, your word says all things work together for good, but there's nothing good about my motorcycle getting damaged. I kind of half smile because that seems pretty frivolous according to some of the things that some of you all have been through. Because we've had tough things happen in our lives, right? Um, Friday, Margie and I went over to uh, Shady Grove Community in White County. Brother Johnson, you know where that is? There's Shady Grove Methodist Church over there where my family all went to church at. And we went to the Shady Grove Church there. Uh, because uh, Martha Jared passed away this week. And uh, retired Pastor Greg Gallagher, who I don't know what to think, because I remember when Greg first got called to preach, and he was only about 16, and I was already in seminary by that time. So he's retired now. But uh, he pastored Methodist churches up in Kentucky. He conducted the service, and he had married Martha's daughter. So they'd come back regularly. And, of course, one of the things that I've been watching, and by the way, we, uh, as often as I can find a way to get there, last year I preached here on the Labor Day Sunday morning and then took off from over at Blanton's church and drove on over to Shady Grove because we had the uh, uh, Knowles family reunion. We used to also have a Jared family reunion over there, but I asked them, what happened to that Jared family reunion? They said, everybody that used to come to the Jared reunion came to the Knowles reunion, so we decided to quit having it. Because you see, Martha Jared, who passed away this past week, her husband... And my father were double first cousins. Y'all know any double first cousins? Because my grandfather married one of the Knowles girls, and his brother, Tom, married one of the other Knowles girls. So my father said he used to feel closer to those cousins up there than he did his own brothers and sisters. But... Uh, Greg did a wonderful job leading that service. But one of the things that I knew, because I've been through it too, was that the hard time was not dealing with her death. The hard time was dealing with the increasing disability from Alzheimer's and dementia that they had had for months and months and years to go through. And so as I talked with her four children, there at the service on Friday. I said, I, I know how y'all feel. And they said, yes, it's a relief. Except that I know that they, that, that they don't know that there's now more to go through. Some of y'all been through that. And so at times you can read this verse and you can say, oh God, what in the world can that mean?
because the difficulties that I'm having in my life, I can't see any way that that will turn out for good. And so we got to be able to figure out how do we trust God when we face the rough times in life or else when those rough times come and if you hadn't already experienced some of that, the bad news for you is it will. Nobody gets through this life without facing difficult times. When you face those things, if you can't figure out how to continue to trust God in the midst of that, then you're going to walk away. And you know people who have. And the problem with that is that they've been taught an idea that If you just serve Jesus, he'll protect you from all the bad stuff. And if you live for Jesus very long, you had to give that up. Because it's not true. And yet, here the scripture says to us, with confidence, in the middle of a very powerful and wonderful victory, Victorious passage of scripture and by the way I'm not finished with the chapter yet but I'm going to get to it next week and truth of the matter is like I said every week that I've talked about passages from Romans chapter 8 there's no way I can get to all of the good stuff in Romans chapter 8 and I'm skipping over some of what I read this morning and I hate it because it's good stuff but But we need to stop and talk about this for a minute because it's an issue in our personal lives is how do we continue to go on when we face the worst things that can happen? And some of y'all been through that. And there's not a easy or simple answer to that. You know, and I can keep having these scenes flash in front of me when I think about this. You know, church I pastored in this county, some of y'all know who I'm going to talk about, I'm going to guess. I remember a young mother sitting in the pastor's study with me who had just had an answer-to-prayer baby. Everybody was so excited. The first day that she went back to work and had that baby, about an hour after she got to work, she got a call that the baby was not delivered. Thank you. 
clearly at that time the raw suffering and struggle this morning. I don't know that this explanation is going to help you a whole lot when you listen to that, but over time you're going to be able to figure it out. So let's stay with this for a minute because the first requirement was who, the second was what, and the answer is for good. But we need to define good before we can go on to the next two. Because to me, good is just meaning whatever I want, right? I'm as good at naming things I want. And you know what? I've found out particularly in the last couple of days that I can sit with my tablet while I'm sitting in front of a TV show and click on the Amazon.com and I can spend a lot of money real fast. Because I can find out I want a lot of stuff. Uh-oh, we got an engaged couple over here looking at each other. Uh, we were going to schedule a premarital we want, we need to understand or not what this is talking about. That's not necessarily a good. And that's why we get so upset with God. So the young missionary nurse that I was reading her book uh, this morning when she was talking about the fact that I can't find anything good about my motorcycle getting damaged so that I'm going to be walking. It's going to take me a lot further to get where I need to go from the hospital to the church to the place I'm staying, and therefore I'm not going to be able to do as much for you, Jesus. But then she tells what happened next, which is that she found out she's actually got a note from the person who had borrowed her motorcycle and talked to her about struggles that she was having in her life, and she was able to begin to communicate with somebody that she could share with about the hard time that she was personally at. She, because this person had borrowed her motorcycle and had damaged it, she began to develop a relationship with this person and was able to talk to her about the work of God. And she said, I would have never had that connection. And so I had to come back to God and say, God, I'm sorry for complaining so much. Because you took something out that was much more valuable for me than the time and the money. So, when we ask the who, it is those, which is the who, who are called according to his purpose. <laughs> and what is his purpose here? Well, he goes on and explains that. His purpose is that those he foreknew, he also predestined. We don't like the word predestined. You know, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to develop that. I'm not trying to be the great man that this guy would be. He says, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. The good that God is wanting to work in our lives is to make us more like him. I can pray a whole lot. Oh, Lord, make me more like you. But then when I look through my life and realize what things work to make me more like him, I like any of them, and I don't want to go back and do any of them over again. When I was a young person and I prayed, oh Lord, make me more like you, that I was asking for more awful things to happen to me. I took 
in the cold. But we need to recognize the fact that God's working through all those things that happen to us that are so awful. To help make us more like Jesus. And so that's the purpose of life. It's to make us more like Second, who? It's God. He's the one we can trust with our lives. He's the one we are working. Now we're going to receive communion together today, and uh, you know we've got these boxes up here on the screen for the prayer of great thanksgiving. Uh, it's also in our hymnal. In uh, pages 15 and 16. And uh, so I'm going to turn it down. I do not mind. I put my glasses on. Uh, it's a good thing to be able to uh, look at the page sometimes. But uh, what I want to say to you is that as we read this together and pray this together, that Christ our Lord invites to this, his table, all those who are willing to repent of their sins and live in peace with their neighbor. And so today, our invitation is not just to those who are members of this church or part of the Methodist church or movement. It is to everyone who is willing to repent and receive the grace of our Lord Jesus. So we invite you to that. Um, let's pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, Lord, we thank you today for what you did for us when you came and died for us. And we know that on the night before, you gave yourself for us. You took bread, blessed it, gave it to your disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you as often as you do this. Do it in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it uh, amongst his disciples, and he said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. For as often as Drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of Christ. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here. Help us to be the body of Christ to a world who needs you. As you pour out your spirit upon these emblems of bread and wine, make them be for us the body of Christ to that end. Uh, Y'all came in slow today. I didn't have somebody to help us, so I'm going to ask my wife to come and help us pray before communion today. And we invite you today to come. We normally come around through this aisle and we'll see as the brothers go to leave the collection and we'll finish. There'll be just a more of a meal there. Take one of Tristan's offering, put it down, and put your knees on that and serve the Lord's aisle for us. And uh, then you can return to your seat. But uh, we invite you to come today and to receive the grace of God.
you know, I can let things slip from my mind, but uh, Pastor Johnson said to me today, I have 30 seconds, so I want to say something. I said, I don't believe you can say anything in 30 <laughs> seconds, but uh, uh, Brother Johnson, what do you want to say to us today? Well, the first thing to apologize for is not getting up. My get her up is kind of strong. And uh, at 2.55 last night, Sunday woke me up. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I was dreaming, I guess dreaming, had a vision about this church. And I was on a hill, so I must have been on this hill up here. So I looked up and saw this church. I saw people coming out of this church, out that door, and around this side. Around the new side, the new building was already there, and people were coming, and we were gathering in the back parking lot. So real was that, I asked my daughter to drive me around them this morning, and they was, we were gathered by the hundreds, people parked all the way up the road here, Woo! down down the Brandy Road, parked on 41, the state patrol was out there, and we were singing. Without my walker. <laughs> <laughs> and we were gathered shoulder to shoulder, singing. And we heard some others singing. They were coming down this road here. And we looked up, and you know who it was? It was our sister church, the Church of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you for what you've done for us. We have celebrated today. Help us to respond with a commitment to serve you with everything we are and everything we have. Amen. Amen.